Y'all can't just surprise somebody in the back seat like that. Hey mom, look, the boys are back in town. What is going on ladies and gentlemen? It is a brand new day over at Shag Shop or the house for right now. But today we're gonna we're gonna get more into into the daily driver things because things need to get fixed. So today in this video we're gonna be talking about radios. This one is coming out. I just I like the double dim, but I don't at the same time. I don't know how to feel about it, but it's coming out because I got one for it. Also, all the speakers are OEM, so we're gonna replace speakers. I just got the seat fixed, that little tab that broke off. So that's rewelded. Now I gotta get it reupholstered, or we may do that in today's video. Not sure yet. JVC with the old, so it's Athena's old radio and old switchback. I'm going to put it in there just because I like the look of it, honestly, for now. I don't know what I'm going to be running switch-wise up here. But let's go ahead and get this thing out. i got to retuck some of this stuff. Let's just get it out and get this one in, and then we'll talk. Shake shop. Best mug I own. So now I got everything off. Super easy. Just a couple plugs on the bezel. Cigar, uh, cigarette lighter. Little lights down there. <clears throat> now I got everything off of here. We got the two plugs, which I already have. Okay, there we go. Ready you're going in. I already have the adapter adapters on it for screws to go in. Pretty simple. Down under there, the yellow the yellow prong that is actually the stock amplifier i unplug all that and undo that because i think it sounds a little bit better with everything undone that being said this already has a little amplifier in it like built in and that is just not it just doesn't push it anymore and plus they come like they get convoluted and one tries to do another one and it's just a pain in the tail. So we're going to plug this up, see if I have power. If I have power, we're going to continue the installation. If not, we have to reevaluate and check some more plugs. So let's check some power. We have power to it. I just unplug, I just unturned it off, but yes, we have power. So I'm actually going to run the new, those are nice, but I got those big beefy RC cables to run from the back to the sub. And then I'm also going to just wire in one strand of wire. That way I can run it all the way around for the sub in the back, which he already actually has one there, but there's no blue wire. I think it gets split and cut up into a few different wires. So I'm gonna change that out. That way it's fresh. I'm around with the RC cable, which is my route is gonna go down over the but like beside the tunnel through the back seat and then pop up right there because it pops up on the other side of the sub so i'm gonna get it all in there that pretty much explains like how i'm gonna run my wires there and i'll show you after i get it run we'll be back so here we have it we got it bolted in all four of the bolts on each side also, I'm going to link this. I can't remember what the name of it is, but I'm going to link it. So that way, y'all know what it is. Y'all like it. Y'all get it. I really like it. I just had a problem on the last 4Runner running the power. Because I ran it like down under the mat. It kind of looked a little scrappy. But it worked. So if there's a better way to do a switch bank there, like wiring-wise, let me know down in the comments. Let me Send me some pictures. I want to see. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I got it plugged in. Well, I don't have the radio plug in, but I got the RC channels in there, which these are the Amazon basics, but they are thick. Um, I really like them, used them all in the last four runner. Got my power antenna wire for the sub or the amplifier on the sub, and then I'm just gonna zip tie these together and then go along the tunnel like I showed y'all. So let us continue to put it together. 
days, weeks, months, I don't know. Except we're doing some upholstery on the seat, and that we are. Watch out, dog. Got the new foam. Just doing the bottom for now. Got the new foam. Got the new cloth. Just Amazon specials. I will shoot them a link in the description. I think it's pretty close. I think it's a little bit like, I don't know. We're definitely going to see how a little bit it is. But I also got the pliers to show y'all how to do it. I'm actually going to work, and we're going to do this at work. So as you can see, we're in the shop. We got the new seat foam, new seat cover, and the seat. What we're going to do is I already popped the plastics off of it. You're going to loosen this bolt here. This bolt that's hiding right up in there. We're going to loosen those two, pull the whole bottom off, and... Oh my I didn't realize how bad it was compared to that one. Oh, I can't wait to put my little tail in that. So we're going to remove that. And then I'm also interested in how the heater works in this. So we're going to dive into that as well. So let me unbolt those four and we will see how the seat disconnected with those four bolts. We're going to go in, pop these little pins off. That way it will release the cushion on there. There, 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 there. I believe there's yep there's a few up through here the wire goes in and I have no idea like I said I have no idea where this heater goes I'm hoping that it's something I can transfer over because that was the main part of why I wanted to do reupholster it myself was because of the heater because I like that function I've never actually had a car with a seat heater and it's winter time here also this thing is disgusting I'm gonna hit it with uh, some cleaning wipe it down get it nice and neat but let's clip these real quick, see where we can go. And that wasn't too bad. So you got hog ring here. These are actually called hog rings. I didn't remember the name of them, but that's what they are. You got a few down here, and then those three on the side. Then we'll just pull that out, set that to the side for now. And if you notice right here along the side, oh man, this thing's so dirty. There's a little wire and uh, I actually have just a little plastic part on the new seat. So I'm assuming that is gonna take the place of this. We're gonna see. Um, oh my gracious. Now we're gonna trace this wire and figure out where it goes. I'm assuming the heater, which is right there. Perfect. So if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we'll have a rod going through there with hog rings attached to it. So we need to cut those to pull those through. Oh, yep, that's that's pretty compromised. So, like I thought, that's the heater. The wires are cut on it and everything. Shoot. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to reuse this one. Hmm. That is very unfortunate. Looks like my tail is going to be untoasted. Good to know for the passenger side, though. Maybe I can order a passenger side one and put it in there. That way my wife will be nice and happy when she rides in the 4Runner. Nice and warm. Let me get the hog hogs off this side and see where to go next with it. Because I'm assuming everything needs to be kind of put together on this. So... Let me get this disassembled and we're going to this disassimilation and the realization struck. I thought that I needed to save these for some odd reason, but I don't because this actually has the wire running through it already. So basically we're just going to set this right on top and we're going to line right there. So I was, I was taking that out. I noticed that this seat actually has wires run through it this cushion so in your hog rings we'll connect there and then connect to the two openings there and then we'll just slowly put it together so that way it covers it and then we'll deal attach it to the metal and the metal back to there i'll throw you all on a time lapse and circle back so i got this whole bag of clips super easy to use let me get you in there so that's how we're connecting the plastic piece going around pretty much to the bottom and then the staple uh hog nose hog clip hog clip going around the rod going around the plastic and these special pliers 
I can do this all with one hand. Special pliers have a little indentation in them. So you just put it in there. And then once you get it in a, into place, you just clamp it down. Bada bing, bada boom. Back on the time. I realized that I didn't time lapse any of that. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of sucks. But as you can see, yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, I mean, I could just pull this whole section up for you. There it is. It's nice and attached. I like the plastic. And it just snaps in around it. Super easy to do. Got this whole thing done. Now I just got to slide the metal back in there and hog clip it into it and I will make sure that is on the time lapse. put back together so I did two here because there's no rod going through this piece back here I mean you got the plastic pieces I do wish that I pulled this back a little bit that's kind of unfortunate but <sighs> for the first time looking at it, not too bad at all I do wish I shifted the uh the leather back a little bit just like I mean there's a little bit there I lined up the plastic to the front and I should have split the difference, but you know, all learning curves, all learning curves. Let's go ahead and get this thing cleaned up. Got that sort of cleaned up. I'm not super worried about it because it's just a forerunner. I mean, I, yeah. I think it looks pretty daggum good. It's in a little crooked because of how it lays, but redid my four bolts, two on each side, right there, right there. And I chose not to go underneath because I just I didn't want to do it. Um, I mean, you're never going to see it down there, so I'm not super concerned with it. So, let's get these plastics cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the car, and then we'll really have the test to tell you about. Let's hope y'all don't fall. Um, my headliner's leaking. That sucks. Dang. Oh my gracious, you gotta like curl. Oh my gracious. Oh, this is nice. Oh wow. And I still have the power, uh, yeah, like power slide, power, power, like seat going up, seat going down, all those goodies. But yeah, for like, I think it was like, it's like 40 bucks for the leather 30 bucks for the uh or 40 bucks for the foam and then i think it was like 20 bucks so like i think it would turn out to be like 85 bucks for everything if my math doesn't make sense then math it out um but i like it totally worth it definitely gonna do the back definitely have to do the uh, passenger side but now that i know i will put a heater on that side the more you know so now we gotta figure out why we have a very bad leak right here. But that'll be on next week's episode of Shag Shop. <laughs>